size of a grain of basmati rice. So Patrick here is the CEO. Andy is a licensed body piercer. So let it rip. We're going to see this now. I got it. I can't look. I can't look. Needle is in. Got Chip it. is in. Bingo. Not very much blood at all. Patrick, how that feel? Better than uh, get my wisdom teeth out. Okay, and you're still conscious. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. <laughs> Melissa got chipped yesterday, but you had to be talked into doing this. How long did it take you to say yes to this? I was a little hesitant at first, but I had seven days to think about it. And once I learned the facts, there was no question in my mind. Okay, one last thing we want to show you over here, Hold on, Matt. Go ahead, Steve. They can buy their goodies here in the break room by just using their hand. Real quickly, he's going to get a Kit Kat bar. And it's paid for a dollar and six cents, guys. So the question again, as we asked you last week, are you ready to be chipped, guys? Let's see first what this micro responsibility was project leader or the, pro the senior project engineer. We begin to work on the design of a microchip that, when it was completed, was 0.75 millimeters in diameter, seven millimeters long. It was the size of one fourth of a grain of rice. Again, I want to say that I was not a Christian and there were no Christians there. They said they wanted this to have a power source and be able to emit a signal. And they told us they wanted us to use lithium as a battery source. Lithium's used in watch batteries, it's used in uh, heart pacemaker batteries, it's used in a lot of places. I designed into this microchip a little charging circuit that would charge that battery. This sounds like a lot of technical things coming together, but if you'll bear with me one minute, you'll see what God has laid out about this microchip. When we discovered that we needed to know, we needed to be able to charge that battery, I needed a temperature change, a change in temperature, to cause current to flow through that little charging circuit that would charge the battery. So I began to, we began to investigate and find out where in the body does the temperature change the most rapidly. We spent over a million dollars in taxpayer money and when the results came back, there were the information, uh, there was a lot of information. We divided it up amongst three teams and then came back together with that information. It was determined that there were two places in the body that were ideal for the microchip. One was just below the hairline on the forehead. Every mother checks their child's temperature right here. So we could have paid the mothers a million dollars and saved a... I never saw a mother check their child's temperature on their ankle. Always right here. The other place was the hand, the right hand preferred, because most people are right-handed. I, this didn't bother me, and it didn't bother anybody else on the team. The hand seemed a good place. Nobody wanted it here. And so the design work, everything was completed. The microchip was done. You are seeing it now on some of the Discovery Channel presentations. Uh, uh, there are people who have received it already. It is real. It's not something that's Shaker. coming way down no, the road. They gave me a Bible. They told me not to read the book of Revelation. They said the book of Revelation is, uh, is too hard to understand. So I waited, and I didn't read the book of Revelation for quite some time. Then one day I came to Revelation 13, verse 16. And he caused us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. I didn't like what I saw. I went back and looked up the word mark. I went to the Strong's Concordance, and I found that John had used three words for the word mark. Char, char, charagma, charakter, and charax. That was from the Greek. I looked at those words. They talked about a scratch or an etching. They talked about a lot of things. And I said, God, this isn't it. We didn't do it. He said, go to the word for 666. The word is chixastigma. In the Greek, it says to go to 4742 as a cross. The last half of the word chixastigma. 
And when I looked at what it said, it says stizo, i.e. to stick, to prick, a mark incised or punched into for recognition of ownership. I thought about the little injection tool. The end of it is called an incisor. I began to weep and I began to cry and I said, Oh God, what have we done? I couldn't believe that this lined up with what we had developed. What I want to tell you is that this is real. And I tell you as a Christian, you cannot take this. No matter what anybody says, God's Word says you cannot take it. No matter what they try to talk you into, God's Word says don't take it. In Revelation 14, verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It's very simple. God's Word says do, do not take it. Uh, take this House of Representative bill that just so happens to be H.R. 6666. Probably just a coincidence, right? COVID-19 testing, reaching, and contacting everyone trace act. What? to authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 and related activities such as contact tracing through mobile health units and, as necessary, at individuals' residences and for other purposes. This is some serious draconian measures right here. How is that related to the Mark of the Beast? Well, you know, I've begun to wonder if the Mark of the Beast is something more than just what we usually hear about the Mark of the Beast, you know, as it pertains to buying and selling. Like, for instance, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Now, most people stop there. They think, well, you know, Mark of Beast just has to do with buying and selling. But yet, we also see in Revelation 9, 5, and 6, they, the locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9, were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. 
and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. So this is the other part of the mark of the beast that people aren't talking about. That people are begging for death and death flees from them. Now think about this. We as believers in Yeshua, Jesus Christ, we believe that we have eternal life through what? The precious shed blood of the Lamb, right? Yeshua's shed blood paid the price for our eternal life. Well, if the Antichrist is an antithesis of Christ, including being resurrected himself, what if there's a counterfeit immortality offered through something in his blood? And it appears to be something like that because when people take the mark of the beast, they are no longer redeemable. They also beg for death and death flees from them. And we see in Revelation 19.20, And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. It seems to me that those who take the mark of the beast change themselves like something happens to them on a genetic level that changes them in such a way that they are no longer redeemable now I, I remember back in the late 80s or 90s when the barcodes first came out and as you can see in the barcodes the two long skinny lines they represent the number six so you can see a typical six represented by two skinny numbers so like you have a thick line and a thin line that represents zero two thick lines is two etc well we see when we get the six you got two skinny lines well you have two thin skinny lines, two thin skinny lines, two thin skinny lines. So you have 666 with an identifier in the middle. So of course, you know, and I was one of them, back when these things started becoming popular and we started going everywhere and everywhere, it, 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 going to stores and everywhere you went, you had to scan your barcode, right? Boop. You couldn't buy or sell without a barcode. So we're like, Yo, 666, that's the barcode. And then, you know, as we started going into the late 90s and 2000s stuff, we started thinking more along the line of the microchip, the microchip, 666, it's the barcode. You know, uh, I'm going to suggest there may be something more to it. Now, we also see here in this graphic that I have on the screen, Sunday. And I do believe that there, there is a spiritual aspect to it in the sense that if you follow Yahuwah and his ways, he says that Sabbath and the feasts and his law are a sign between him and us that would be on our forehead and our right hand, which to me seems to symbolize what we think about and what we do, the actions. So those who are in him will walk in his ways and do what he says. Those who are after the beast will do what he says and walk in his ways. And they'll do things like exchange the Sabbath, which is a sign between the creator and his covenant bride. Uh, that's the Sabbath. Well, Sunday's a counterfeit of that. And Christmas, what I affectionately now refer to as x mess and Ishtar Day, Easter, things of that nature, these are what I call beast feasts. These are things that are related more to Nimrod and have nothing to do with our Savior. So many people are following in his ways and doing those things, and, and those are now a sign that shows where their allegiance is. If their allegiance is more towards doing the beast feast than they are doing the feast of Yahuwah, I mean, that's, what's they, that's what they're thinking about and that's what they're doing. So in a spiritual sense, that's between their eyes and, and on their hand, you know, if we symbolize it like, like that. So I do believe that there's a spiritual aspect to it, that the mark of the beast is the antithesis of the mark of Yahuwah, i.e. doing things his way, walking in his ways and doing his commandments and things of that nature. So the antithesis would be walking in the ways of the beast and doing his feasts and, you know, doing things his way. So I get that. I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a both and. I think it's all of the above. And I think that the syringe may have something to do with it as well. As of a grain of basmati rice. So Patrick here is the CEO. Andy is a licensed body piercer. So let it rip. We're going to see this now. I got it. I can't look. I can't look. Needle is in. Got Chip it. is in. Bingo. Not very much blood at all. Patrick, how that feel? Better than I uh, get my wisdom teeth out. Okay. okay, and you're still conscious. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. <laughs> Melissa got chipped yesterday, but you had to be talked into doing this. 
How long did it take you to say yes to this? I was a little hesitant at first, but I had seven days to think about it. And once I learned the facts, there was no question in my mind. Okay, one last thing we want to show you over here, Hold on, Matt. Go ahead, Steve. They can buy their goodies here in the break room by just using their hand. Real quickly, he's going to get a Kit Kat bar. And it's paid for a dollar and six cents, guys. So the question again, as we asked you last week, are you ready to be chipped, guys? Let's first what this micro.